Hey, 42 here. If you've ever felt swamped by the chaos of it all and crave some time alone in nature, why not venture to Groynard Island? This remote lump of land off the northwest coast of Scotland is utterly uninhabited and devoid of irritating modern conveniences like Wi-Fi, running water or reliable shelter. Encircled by the frosty waters of the North Atlantic, you could even satisfy your ponchon for cold water swimming. But along with your speedos, you might want to pack your hazmat suit. And instead of sun cream, it's Scotland, it's probably a good idea to top up your vaccinations, specifically the kind that protects you from deadly bacterial infections. Oh, and don't be alarmed if the locals refer to your new holiday spot as the Island of Death. According to the British Ministry of Defence, it's perfectly safe to visit. Well, it is now, anyway. Because for a solid 50 years, beginning in the early 1940s, this two square kilometre island in the arse end of nowhere was one of the most perilous places on Earth, thanks to one of the most bizarre covert operations of the Second World War. Operation Vegetarian. Despite the name, it wasn't an assault on humanity's herbivores. Quite the contrary. It was a crazy campaign against carnivores, specifically the German ones. For that reason, it was arguably one of the most misnamed military campaigns of the 20th century. Right up there with Operation Toenails, the invasion of New Georgia by Allied troops, Operations Red Bean and Frequent Wind, which must have been unpleasant for everyone involved, and Operations Beaver Cage and Viking Snatch. The less said about those, the better. Operation Vegetarian was a proposed bio-warfare campaign during World War II that aims to sabotage the German food supply by contaminating cattle with anthrax. The horrific bacterial infection, not the American thrash metal band. Though I'm sure cattle wouldn't like that very much either. The plan was the brain fart, I mean brain child, of British scientist Paul Fields. A distinguished biology boffin who, three years into World War II, was tasked with concocting a biological weapon that could turn the tide on Hitler. His answer was simple. Drop millions of anthrax-laced linseed cakes across Germany during the summer when the nation's cattle would be out grazing. If everything went to plan, the cattle would consume the cakes and become infected, subsequently infecting the people who ate them. If it turned out that cattle didn't like the taste of anthrax, the cakes would simply dissolve the next time it rained, poisoning the grass which the cows would eventually eat anyway. Either way, things would end badly for the bovines. This whole plot I'm talking about in this video sounds like something imagined by a James Bond villain. But soon after it, the Allies completed an operation just as horrific, the infamous bombing of Dresden, Germany. Whilst this firestorm resulted in massive civilian casualties, like Operation Vegetarian promised to, Dresden was also a strike at the wealth of the German Empire to be. The city was filled with cultural wealth and artifacts like sculptures and artwork, along with many German elites who hoarded such wealth. Their obsession for these fine artworks runs deep. In fact, the German art market experienced a boom during the war, with works seen as stable wartime investments. Flash forward to the 21st century and art stability as an investment has still held over time. It's a strategy that used to only work for the uber rich, until today's sponsor Masterworks cracked the market wide open, selling $45 million worth of art last year alone, and returning the net proceeds, not to billionaires, but to people like you and me. In fact, every Masterworks exit to date has returned a profit, with another two sales in just the last few weeks. With over 700,000 users, Masterworks offerings have sold out in minutes. They even had to make a waitlist for new users, but I've got you special access to skip it, so just click the link in the description right now. Don't miss out. The bacteria that causes anthrax, Bacillus anthracis, can be inhaled, ingested or absorbed through direct contact with the skin. But the side effects are ultimately the same. Sepsis, multiple organ failure and swelling of the fluid and membranes around the brain and spinal cord, resulting in extensive internal bleeding and eventually death. Cutaneous anthrax, the one you get through your skin, is the most common form and inhalation anthrax is the deadliest. 
but gastrointestinal anthrax, the one the British plan to spread through Operation Vegetarian, isn't far behind. Left untreated, over half of gastrointestinal anthrax patients perish, and even if treated with the right antibiotics, which weren't around in 1942 anyway, 40% of patients don't make it. Anthrax isn't man-made, Bacillus anthracis is found naturally all over the world, mainly in soil. It mostly infects farmed and wild animals who occasionally transmit it to humans. Some scholars think it was the real cause of the fifth plague in the Bible, which describes a sickness that afflicts livestock. Today we still witness roughly 2,000 cases annually, but Operation Vegetarian would have dwarfed those numbers. The plan was to contaminate Germany's beef cattle, possibly infecting humans who feasted on the meat, but at the very least it would have killed all the cows, creating a colossal food shortage that would force the Nazis to reroute resources and attention away from beating the crap out of half of Europe. But this logic was flawed from the outset. When Paul Fills started his research, Hitler and his forces were at the peak of their European expansion granting them access to food supplies far beyond Germany's borders. Killing a lot of local cows would have been horrible, but it wouldn't have starved the nation. So not a particularly pragmatic strategy, but that was far from the worst of it. Operation Vegetarian, despite its tree-hugging name, was an ethical catastrophe. Had it been carried out, it would have been impossible to control the spread of anthrax, which would have infected not only the targeted cattle, but many other animals, humans, and even the land itself, potentially killing millions and rendering all of Germany uninhabitable for generations. In fairness, the British didn't know all of this at the time. To discover anthrax's full lethality, they would first need to do the sciency bit and test the stuff, and for that, they would need a remote, unoccupied area far away from people. Especially people who like to ask inconvenient questions. Which brings us back to Groenard Island, your next dream holiday destination. In 1942, scientists from Porton Down, the government's biochemical research lab in southern England, descended on Groenard Island, taking 60 sheep along for the company. In the first test, a modified plane dropped an anthrax bomb on the island, killing all 60 sheepies, but also some animals on the mainland nearby. Later tests involving anthrax cake bombs caused more unplanned spread of the disease when a contaminated sheep carcass washed up on shore across the bay, sparking an outbreak of anthrax in local animals and livestock. The government told farmers a passing Greek ship was to blame and hushed everything up <laughs> through the tactical use of some very generous bribes. I mean compensation. Despite the collateral damage, anthrax bombs were clearly a very deadly success. Groenard Island was transformed into a forbidding hellscape, freshening death upon any setting foot on its shores. So what did the British military do to remedy this environmental disaster? Carry out a thorough decontamination program restoring the once pristine island? Nah, they put up a big no entry sign and buggered off. Now, if you're thinking, wow, those anthrax experiments sound terrifying, thank God, the British abandoned the project and made themselves a nice cup of tea instead. You would only be partially correct. There was almost certainly tea involved, but the devastating tests on Groenard Island didn't slow down Operation Vegetarian. Quite the opposite. Inspired by their newfound ability to kill lots of living things within a few days, the British military entered full-scale production, and by 1943, they'd stockpiled 5 million anthrax cakes ready for distribution across Germany. As the summer of 1944 approached, Operation Vegetarian was officially ready to bear fruit. Or vegetables. Actually, cakes. Whatever. It was ready. But when the time came to execute the anthrax apocalypse, the need for decimating an entire country with a murderous pathogen had disappeared. With the successful invasion of Normandy behind them, the Allies were steadily moving across Europe, with the Nazis on the retreat. Operation Vegetarian was abandoned, and the five million anthrax cakes were incinerated, along with all the taxpayers' money that had gone into making them. I think I speak for everyone and their cows when I say, Thank God. 
Not only would it have been an act of tremendous cruelty that would forever have shifted the lines of what's permissible in war, the Brits still didn't know the full potential of what they were dealing with. Yes, they have proved anthrax could be a lethal weapon, but they had no idea how long its effects could last. That they discovered when they went back to Groenhead Island after the war. Scientists assumed the anthrax contamination would neutralise itself after a few years, but the spores proved to be incredibly resilient, and decontamination efforts failed miserably. Groenard remained a death trap for decades, a fact that became public knowledge when a Ministry of Defence video was declassified in 1980. The footage showed the experiments that had been performed almost 40 years earlier. In September, including one bomb dropped from an aircraft, and a third expedition was made in the following summer when four trials were done with the four pound bomb. Sheep were used for the trials because they're particularly sensitive to inhaled anthrax. And this resulted in a public outcry. Just kidding, no one really gave a <laughs> Well, almost no one. A small band of revolutionaries calling themselves, rather ominously, the Dark Harvest Commander of the Scottish Citizen Army. They gave lots of shits. These rebels first announced themselves to the world in 1981 when a mysterious note was pinned to the front door of St Andrew's House, home of the Scottish Government in Edinburgh. They claimed to have assembled a crack team of hard bastards that included at least two microbiologists and that they'd visited Groenard Island to collect over 100 kilograms of poisoned soil. This soil, they threatened, would be left in strategic locations around the country until the government paid attention. Shortly afterwards, a package of anthrax soil was discovered at Porton Down, the facility where Operation Vegetarian was developed. The Dark Harvest Commandos appeared to mean business. Clearly unsettled, the British government sprang into action. Five years later, in 1986, the worst of the topsoil was removed and everything left behind was sprayed with a mixture of seawater and formaldehyde. In 1990, the quarantine was finally lifted and Groenhead Island was officially declared safe-ish to visit. In 1972, the Biological Weapons Convention was created, banning countries from developing, producing, stockpiling or using biological weapons. 185 countries signed up, effectively making it illegal for governments and militaries to muck about with substances like anthrax. Hopefully, thanks to monstrous mistakes like Operation Vegetarian, we're all becoming a little smarter about the downsides of mass destruction and can look forward to a more peaceful world for all of mankind and cows. Thanks for watching.